This week, we're celebrating a major milestone here at the RV Miles podcast. It's our 300th episode, and we're celebrating the only way we know how by looking at the numbers. Plus, the Tesla Cybertruck has been released. We're going to talk about that and if it makes any sense for any RVers out there in a very non-biased way. This is the RV Miles podcast. This winter, L.L. Bean wants to help you feel great out there with gear tips and advice for heading outdoors and exploring all the possibilities of the season. When the temperatures are freezing, your extremities are going to feel the cold first, and nobody likes numb fingers or frosty toes. One small piece of gear that makes a big difference is glove liners. Put these on and you won't just get a little extra warmth. You can also take your hands out of your mittens without exposing them to the elements. For more tips, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash guide. Welcome to episode number 300 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And I can't believe for 300 episodes, we have been saying some version of how we are RVers. And along with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, we have been crisscrossing North America on one epic podcasting road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks. And today, we're going to talk about the numbers yeah. of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we did we 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 have started our RVing journey in 2016. We haven't entirely been podcasters since then. We no. started podcasting in 2017, right? Yeah, so uh, in we the summer. launched rvmiles.com in February of 2017, then we launched the podcast in July, I believe of Something 2017. Like yeah, so yeah. 6 years, 6 and a half years almost 300 episodes. What a journey. When you brought this to me back in 2017, did I think I would be sitting in a kitchen six years later <laughs> podcasting? Oh, not in my wildest dreams. We did several of those first episodes just sitting on the floor, like in a spare bedroom at your parents' house, I uh -huh. remember. Uh, but we're going to get into a lot of the, the reminiscing about the podcast in the second segment of the show. Um, but first, here in the beginning of the show, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Tesla Cybertruck. This thing has been announced. It was announced four years ago, right? It has been delayed and delayed. And in the meantime, other electric trucks have come out since it was supposed to be the first electric truck. And it was by far not. Um, and there was a lot of hype over it. And there was a lot of uh, discussion over what it could do, what it couldn't do, what it's going to mean uh, in the world of towing and of truck ownership. So as EV owners and F-350 owners, we, we own a Tesla Model Y and we own uh, we own a Super Duty. And, you know, obviously we've been RVing for a while and uh, knowing sort of the differences between these vehicles, we thought it'd be a good idea here now that this truck has really been released and a lot of people have been anticipating it to talk about what it means uh, and if it's reasonable for somebody who wants to tow an RV to own it. Um, and who are the right people to to buy such a vehicle might be. Yeah, so I see you have put together a bullet point presentation here for us <laughs> in the show notes, as, always of, as you always do. <laughs> and the first one, which caught my eye immediately, is that the top range of the Cybertruck is 340 miles, and that that is going to cost... $20,000 more to get that top range yeah. than the base model, if I'm reading that correct. Yeah, so the base model is... Uh, the, I got the prices here. The base model is the rear wheel drive model. Okay. And it is uh, estimating to start at 49.9. Wait, nine. I'm sorry. Now, you just pulled this picture up. Is this really what it looks like? Have you not seen what the Cybertruck looks like before? I, Are you kidding? I'm Think sorry, of, this has been this? all over the internet for four <laughs> years. You're seeing this for the first time? I'm seeing this for the first time. Yes. Oh, wow. So, that, so I'm is, very interested in is, your feedback here as to what this looks like to is you. Is this a Pontiac Aztec? <laughs> because this looks like a Pontiac For Aztec. some people, it is a beautiful new type of vehicle. It's it's For some people, it is a wild departure from what vehicles <laughs> look like. For others, it looks like a poor 
like Xbox 360 Halo it, render of a vehicle. Yeah, I feel like this picture with the red dirt, like, oh, I'm on Mars. Uh, I really feel like I'm in a bad Minecraft, like, setup here. Like, this is, is this really what that, it that looks like? That is what it looks like. Um, it is, what I, it is a beast. And I could <laughs> put this together. <laughs> I can't get over. I am all. I don't think anything should ever have to look the same well, forever what, and ever and ever. What's strange how to me is what's strange to me is how different it is from other Teslas because Tesla only has a few models. Yeah, and that's what we kind of like about Tesla is that they actually they don't put thirty models out. They just put all of their work into a few models, I, and they don't have a billion options uh they just give you the options that are available tesla ownership has actually been pretty great for us so far but I, this is this is something mm, this is something quite different mm, yeah i where do you where's the fifth wheel go <laughs> you will not be towing a fifth wheel with this okay so <laughs> it's truck that you would never be able to tow a fifth wheel no i mean you want to think of this more in line with a half ton pickup truck okay. so in in line with with an f-150 uh, type truck. Where does the truck camper go? You, they, there are some aftermarket truck campers that have already been okay. announced for those oh, truck campers. You don't really put in a half ton truck normally either, but there are some little pop up tents for the back, different sort of shelter things for the back of it. So what you're saying mm -hmm. is that this is basically a Toyota Tundra that you're never going to get to use for RVing. Well, can I mean, no, I mean, I, there are lots no of people. Oh, no, 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 you're, so you're, there, you're, shading, you're shading, you're shading Tundra owners and you're shading <laughs> all electric truck owners already. I'm not, uh, this is not, not all electric truck owners. I've seen what the Rivian looks like. Don't come at me. Right. But this. it has like, the same, it has the same capabilities as this truck. So there are people that are towing trailers with a Rivian absolutely. and there will be people that will tow trailers with this. You're not going to put a truck up camper in the back of it. No, um, or no, if, no, no. or you might put something tent like in the back of it. Um, there are some pop up shelter type things, but you're not going to put much other than that. Okay, I know we're going to get into this. Yeah. Okay, so you just said rear wheel drive forty nine eight ninety. Okay, if you want all wheel drive, you're going up to sixty eight eight ninety. If you want the cyber uh -huh. beast, uh -huh. which is what we're talking about today, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars, ninety six thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, yeah, eleven thousand pound towing capacity is the exact the only difference is the torque yeah. between all-wheel drive and the cyber yeah. beast so there are three models there is yes. the rear wheel drive the all-wheel drive and the cyber beast the cyber beast is going to have a uh, a little bit lower max range it's going to have a very fast zero to 60 2.6 seconds zero to 60 wow. if you feel like you need to do that in a truck we uh, and don't more need to do that in the tesla but the all-wheel drive uh, version is probably the version that that most people that buy this truck are going to buy I would... in fact you cannot buy the real the rear wheel drive version yet it is estimated to be available in 2025 it is only the all-wheel drive at 68,000 69 9,000 yeah. and the cyber beast that are available at the moment. Can I point out two things sure. on here? So first off, we're looking under the probable savings tab, not the savings tab. This is your probable savings tab. And then down at the bottom, it says, Oh, these prices we're telling you right now are assuming that you're getting the IRA no, no, federal no. tax credit. No, we're, we're not. Oh, we are. Yes, okay. we so, are. I'm sorry. So the purchase price. <laughs> so we are. So the purchase are, price is seventy nine nine for you. the all wheel drive and ninety nine nine for the yes. Cyber Beast, and then sixty thousand dollars for the not yet available rear wheel drive yes. version that will Thank you. that will maybe be available in 2025. Yeah. That not yet available version has a range of only two hundred and fifty miles. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other two have a range of 320 or 340. They have a max towing capacity of 11,000 mm -hmm. pounds. Um, so these are all specs that were way overhyped by Tesla, uh, by Elon Musk in particular. Yeah, let's be um, honest. Over the course of the years. It was supposed to come in at, at like $40,000 uh, for the base version. It was supposed to have a 500 mile range and it was supposed to have like 14,000 or 15,000 pounds of towing capacity. So what we got instead 
is a truck that is very much in line with the Rivian and uh -huh. the F-150. So if we can go back and, and you can stop like, looking at the photo I can't that stop you looking can't get over. At it. Um, I, and I, I want to be really clear, like some of the snarkiness here. Is with, in, in, in the eye of the it beholder. It is in the eye right? of the beholder. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's ugly. That's, that's not what I'm mm -hmm. saying. I, I did not, you have to change your perspective, I guess, of what you think the word truck means. It doesn't visually. look like a truck. It, and and, that is, and that's it, important because you won't be able to use the same sort of bed accessories and all that sort of stuff because it is different. You're also asking me to pay a hundred thousand dollars for picture now i could stand next to it and be like oh this is so solid and so sweet well, but you are asking me to pay a hundred thousand dollars that looks like something my kid buys a skin pack for in minecraft that costs 9.99 think the vast majority of people are not going to buy the top top one of the line and, and i think that's very common around all truck lines is they put these ultra premium models out for people to buy if they have the money and if they're really interested in having the best of the best, but, yeah. but they make that next, that next less expensive one more attractive is if, really what it comes down to. If this was your primary vehicle mm -hmm. and you RV locally, and there's so much that goes, take looking at this from like a full timer's perspective or a really heavy RVers perspective, but let's just look at it from what a lot of people are people who enjoy RVing locally. They really never go within a hundred miles of where they live. And they're also able to use this as their primary vehicle. They're able to put a charging port into their house. Like yeah. I can see so many positives to the, this the, for our, for RVing. The big thing here though, is, is that I, People have been saying to me in particular for the last several years, um, as I've as somebody who likes EVs and has an EV and has been critical of the ability of EV trucks uh, just to keep people understanding what they're going to buy. That's my whole goal here is that people understand what they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, when when we've covered the Rivian, when we've covered the Lightning have said, well, just wait until the Cybertruck comes out. It's going to be the first one that you can realistically tow with because your your range basically cuts in half. Whether you're towing w with this having an 11,000 pound ca capacity, whether you're towing 7,000 pounds with it or 11,000 pounds with it, your range is, is essentially going to cut in half. So what that would have meant with a 500 mile range is 250 miles. You stop to charge once and then maybe you go another 150. Yeah. That's a reasonable travel day mm -hmm. for, for an RV -er, right? When you get down to 340 miles and you cut that in half and now we're at 160 before we have to charge. Now that's the full range. So if you cut that down to like, you only want to go from, you know, go down to 20% or 10% at the least, and maybe you're not going to charge well over 90% because it takes a lot longer when you get up there. You're cutting that range down even more before you charge with, with something like this. If you're towing like a medium size RV, if you go super small, say you're towing a, a teardrop or a pop-up, that might be a little bit different. Um, but the bottom line, I guess here is this isn't the game changer that no. most of us has, had hoped for because it's right in line with what Rivian and Ford offer. So Rivian's top range is actually quite a bit more. Rivian's top range is over 400 miles. And uh, the F-150 Lightnings is right within um, the same area, around 320 miles. So very similar, very similar towing capacities uh, on, on all of these. Um, it's, it's more than the lightning's towing capacity. I'll say that, but it is about the same as the Rivian R1T's towing capacity. And all of these trucks weigh a lot. If you look at the Cybertruck, it actually, it looks like it weighs more than it does. So it weighs about the same as the other two trucks. Again, it looks like it weighs a ton and that's because it's made out of, out of uh, stainless steel. It's a stainless steel body. Uh, that that's wild that it is actually stainless steel body. And I've seen some of the crash test videos of this. Yeah. And that, this is where it really shines because like I saw a side impact crash test with this and it barely dented the door. It's a cyber um, truck. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, they, they it's make the a big deal. It's the terminator of our They make a deal, uh, industry, a big deal about it being bulletproof and all that sort of stuff. And I, I mean, I don't necessarily need Who my vehicle you? to be 
bulletproof. Who are you selling that to? And I wonder if I <laughs> did get a dent, what it would cost me to oh, fix boy. that dent. There are things like that 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 I would be concerned about. Um, some other some other takeaways I have from from this launch here. Um, there's no spare tire spot. Hmm. The other two have a spare tire. Most Teslas Teslas don't come with spare tire. None of them do. Yeah, we don't um, have a spare. Most tire. electric a lot. Most vehicles these days at all don't come with spare tires, but virtually all trucks do. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, it's it's for EVs. It's a it's a weight savings thing. Um, but at least with the the Rivian and the Ford, there's a spot for the spare tire. There's not mm-hmm. even a spot for the spare tire on the Cybertruck. Basically, you're you're putting it in the bed, and that bed is already a limited space. If you want to have a spare tire, that's where you've got to put the spare tire. So that's something important to think about. Um, it does have a 240 volt, 50 amp outlet in the back, so you can plug a 50 amp RV to into it and use that as a power source, or you can charge both at the same time, do that sort of thing, which is something similar to the lightning. The Rivian does not have that. The Rivian has outlets in it, but they're not, they're just standard 110 volt Edison plugs. One thing that is interesting that Tesla has teased in this announcement, uh, and on, their website a little bit is the uh, possibility of a range extender and a range extender is some sort of fossil fuel uh, usually or hydrogen uh, based like a mini generator to extend the range of an electric vehicle. And this is something we talked about when Ram made their new mm-hmm. announcement of their their upcoming uh, electric truck, which will also have a range extender built in. Um, and I think that makes that one very, very attractive, but th- there's no details on that yet at all. So we don't know what that's going to look like if it's ever going to exist, because lots of things Tesla announces never happen. Just remember never. that Tesla, the face of Tesla <laughs> is a businessman and it is his job, a very outspoken to sell his product <laughs> and he's going to oversell and he's going to make promises that never happen. But, you know, here yeah. we go. Cybertruck is here. And now I have joined everyone from 2019 and I now know what it looks like. Yeah. So, so uh, there you go. So essentially, like, I, I guess the big thing for us as Tesla owners is the Tesla charging network is a clear winner when it comes to electric vehicles. We've done a little bit of charging outside of the Tesla network, and those chargers are always way slower. They're usually like two spots where the Tesla chargers, there's like 14 uh, and um, they're often broken. Mm-hmm. And Tesla's just really good at showing you, like on the app, how many are available and how fast it's going to charge and all that sort of stuff. Now, Tesla has started to allow third parties, including Ford, to use superchargers. So that's not as clear of a difference between these. But at this point, if I'm looking at one of these, I'm mainly looking at if I'm if I'm looking at doing a lot of fun off roading type stuff and I want a light truck to get out there and I'm not doing a ton of towing. Um, I'm probably looking at at the Rivian, uh, which is you know that's in the eighty thousand dollar range, mm-hmm. okay. And so is so is the F one fifty Lightning. Uh, the Lightning, I would probably be looking more at. Um, although the Rivian has a better towing capacity, so I don't know. They 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 all have their pluses and minuses, but these three trucks are very very similar in range uh, with each other uh, and a lot of the different features of them. So who are these for? If you tow locally. I think an electric truck is very feasible right now. And I, let's be honest, that's a majority of our viewers. Yeah. And listen, Tesla, call us. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll take out. it out. We'll yeah. take it out. We'll try it out yeah. for you. We'll give you yeah. some feedback. We'll do the same for you too, Rivian and Ram. Like, yeah. it's fine. Just give us the call. We'll take it out. We'll tell you what we think about it. We'll do some charging. We'll come back. We'll report to everybody what it was like to take the cyber truck out for a weekend. I think the bigger use for any of these trucks for people who camp are probably going to be for people who tent camp. Yes. And they're going to be able to have a vehicle with them that they can plug stuff into and use. Yeah. Um, And I think that's probably more of the use case right now. If you, but, but you can still like, if you, you got a boat, you tow it to your local Lake, that sort of stuff. You can do that with these trucks. You're just, it's not going to be the greatest experience towing cross country with them. Uh, Though some people are already doing it. There are people out there doing it. 
And that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, despite what it looks like, uh, at least for me right now, I just take some time to get used to it. It is really exciting to see that the future of EV trucks continues to move forward, even if we're not meeting some of the promised uh, range lengths or towing capacities that a certain Elon Musk promised with this cyber truck <laughs> you want to click click order with card right here due today nope. 250 dollars. Nope. we all. are not uh nope we're not ordering anymore i am not in any at all interested in getting rid of Fordo. all right we're gonna take a break and when we come back we're gonna cover our last several years over 300 episodes 300. of the rv miles podcast we'll be right back this episode is sponsored by the park wolf app Ever found yourself in the heart of a national park surrounded by beauty, but unsure where to go or what to see? That's where Park Wolf comes in. Park Wolf is the ultimate app for exploring national parks. As you drive, the GPS shows you what's coming up on the road, and an audio guide will fill you in on what's there so you can decide if it's worth a stop for you or not. Gas running low, looking for a bite to eat or a bathroom break? Park Wolf's got you covered. It keeps track of the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover areas. And the best part, it works without an internet connection. And if you're a wildlife enthusiast, you'll love Park Wolf's wildlife maps and sighting notifications. So before you set off on your next national park adventure, download the Park Wolf app for your iPhone from the App Store. It's your ultimate guide to national parks. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight-distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth-wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. We're back and we're going to talk here about our last several years as podcasters, over 300 episodes. We're so thankful for you for being here, for sharing this journey with us, uh, especially those of you that have been with us from the beginning, uh, our mile marker members, um, but anybody new, anybody that's just any time you've shared us, anytime <laughs> you've, you've just listened to us, we're just so thankful that you've been able to be a part of this journey. Yeah, it's really wild because in the six years that we have been doing this, we have also watched the growth of podcasting, the absolute experience explosion of podcasting. And so when we talked about what would be a great way to celebrate 300 episodes, because frankly, we never thought we would make it to 30, let alone 100 and then 200. And now here we are sitting at 300. We never thought that this would be something people would be interested in listening to us like that's insane. I did, but okay. I didn't. I, that, I, I don't find us that interesting. And so, <laughs> but I thought it would be really fun when we sat down to talk about this, to look at the stats, because I think this is something that we've all achieved together as a community of podcast listeners, not only just in the podcast world, but in RV Miles, everything we're going to share, we achieved all of this together. So we celebrate this with you. And I think the coolest thing to start off with is I just want to give some overall stats about podcasting. Like this is the world in which podcasting lives right now. And as of November of 2023, there are 4.2 million podcasts out there That's in the a world. Lot. Wow. Okay. There is a podcast for everything. Now, 3.9 of those belong to true crime. And then the rest, no, I don't have the true crime. No, I think 3.9 are people that are just sitting around in a room well, with their buddies getting drunk and talking about football. And that's, that's great too. Um, of the 4.2 million, 2.6 million of those are on Apple podcast, which makes Apple podcast the largest podcast platform in the world. Okay. There are over 87 million individual episodes published on Apple Podcasts. So you've got 2.6 million shows with a combined total of 87 million episodes. For perspective, in 2018, just five years ago, there were only 18.5 million episodes on Apple Podcasts. Wow. So in five years, 69 million have been added to Apple Podcast. Now, 
This is where it gets interesting to me because this is something that we talk a lot about to we're very, we love to talk to other podcasters or people interested in doing a podcast. And the first thing that we always say is that like your first probably six months are going to be your most painful six months because you're developing something that no one knows is there. Yeah. And there's no like real easy way to advertise it yeah. other than trying to get your friends and family to listen to it, which they're not, they're not interested. No, they don't. They are not <laughs> interested in listening to you. No, none of our family listens to there's this a show. Couple, a couple do. A, a few, maybe the yeah. parents. Yeah. The parents. Do. None of, none of the siblings, yeah. none of the extended family, none of the best friends listen to this show. Like no one wants to listen to us. But where I'm going with this is that, again, according to the stat from November, so there are 2.6 million podcasts on Apple. There are only 550,000 podcasts that are active, meaning that they have posted an episode within the last 90 days. Mm. So there has been, there is this trend in podcasting. Like it's, I think like that flash in the pan idea that like, I'm going to launch a podcast and it's going to go viral and I'm going to be a huge sensation. And they put two, three, four, you know, episodes out and they're like, oh, like 30 downloads. It's so much work. You know, you think you're going to sit down and just be like, hi, welcome to the RV Miles podcast. And then that's it. You just hit, you know, send. It's a ton of work to you know, podcast. You know what really kept me going early on, though, was when you'd be like, oh, it's only 150 people listening to this mm-hmm. episode. But then you think about, what if 150 people were in a room with you listening to you speak? Yeah. That's a lot of people. And you have to remember, too, that often when you see 150 downloads, that doesn't mean it's just 150 people. We know that a lot, us included, we know that a lot of people out there are listening to one episode together. Yeah. So for Jason and Abby, when you see one download from us of yeah. your show, just there's two people listening. Two people listening yeah. So you could have 150 downloads with the potential that you actually are reaching 300 people. And sometimes more. I mean, sometimes we listen to podcasts with all the kids in the car sometimes. Hey, like that yeah. Too. I yeah. mean, now you just, now you just logged five people listening to you. Right. So, and everyone's going to have a different opinion. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've already read it. No, can't, what do you think? This is probably such an easy question. What do you think is the number one podcast in the entire world? Well, oh, are you serious? Well, there's, there's some caveats here because it was Joe Rogan, but there's some questions over to whether it is still Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is exclusive to Spotify. Okay. Well, according to several articles I went through and yeah. read as of this fall, he is still considered the Joe Rogan experience yes. is still considered the number one podcast. But I will let me tell you though, Adam Carolla claims that he is the most downloaded podcast. <laughs> Look, Adam and Joe can go f- <laughs> find Adam Carolla and Joe Rogan. What is this? God, we're Adam Carolla, Joe this, Rogan, Elon Musk. We're talking about some very is, similar people here on this podcast. But I today. love that the like the the creme de la creme of podcasting is Adam Carolla <laughs> and Joe Rogan. Like this is w- the world in which I have a business. According to all of these, it is the Joe Rogan experience followed very closely by RV miles. So, <laughs> I, was, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get that one out. So we're really honored to be the second yeah. <laughs> biggest podcast mm-hmm. in the entire world. It's amazing. Uh, there's so many RVers out there. Um, but this is the, okay. Don't look at this one. I'm not looking. Okay. okay. What is the percentage of people in the U S that you that know what a podcast is. What, mm. What's the percentage number? Take a guess. Seventy nine percent. You lied. <laughs> You're such a dork. <laughs> yes. I'm taking my glasses off so I can't read it now. No, okay? well now I'm done okay. asking you questions. Okay. Put your glasses back on. You'll never be able to read anything on the screen. <laughs> yes. So according to several studies, around only. 79% of people in the U.S. are familiar with the concept of a podcast. And I think that this is where YouTube comes into play. Because I was talking to Jason, we when I was looking at our stats, we had had this huge explosion. It's starting 20 in 2020 into 2021 and, and numbers just... Shoom. And then I started to notice that some of it was ticking down as we moved into 2022 and 2023. And I realized that that was the next phase of podcasting 
which has become YouTube. Yeah. So in 2021, and I'll get into this a little bit, that is when we officially launched the RV Miles podcast YouTube channel. And that is really because that was around the time that we started to see like everyone is doing was that this. when we launched the podcast channel or when we started you started video podcasting. No, I, I got all of that oh, in here. We'll oh, get to sorry, that. Okay. Sorry. We're going to just slow, okay, slow your okay, roll. Okay. Okay. okay so okay, anyway, okay. this is the, that was the overall okay. world of podcasting. Let's move into the second largest mm-hmm. podcast in the world's stats. That's going to be RV uh-huh, miles. Sure. Uh, Joe Rogan, take note, Adam, I'm coming for you. Uh-huh. So we launched in July of 2017, and this is where, as a community, we have made some incredible strides together. So since we launched in 2017, this is audio stats we're going to do first. We have had over 3.7 million listens to the RV Miles podcast, which if I did my math right, and (laughs) you all know (laughs) that numbers are not easy for Abby, but we did talk this through. If I did my math right, that means that we have out in the world listened 222 million minutes of our voices have been out in the world. That's creepy. During those 3.7 million, give or take maybe a few hundred, right? Because I usually just used a solid hour as my math guide, you know that sometimes we're a little less, sometimes we're a yeah, little more. Some, some people don't listen to the whole thing. Some people are like, I just heard 30 seconds, out, bye-bye. Uh, so 222 million minutes have been listened to of the RV Miles audio version. 3.7 million listens or downloads, which means even one download. Again, let's go back. One download reaching more than one person it's pretty amazing when you think about that. So thank you, everyone. That is just an incredible number. Our top three audio episodes are episode 221, Wild RV Travel Stories, part two. That's our <laughs> number one downloaded episode. The second one is How We Choose a Campground. And then this guy just popped up in our top 10, both episodes, But of course, the third one is the current state of the RV industry with Josh, the RV nerd. Josh is, of course, a good friend of ours. He's been on a couple episodes. Uh, This was the episode. Y'all did this 231. That would have been uh, right at the beginning of 2022. So as we were moving out of really pandemic RVing and there was going to be this idea that all the industry was just going to crash and boom and you know, no one, everyone's going to sell off their stuff. So that episode you and Josh did together, uh, some fun facts about, uh, the 300 episodes that since we started recording in 2017, RV miles podcast has recorded in four different RVs, 39 different States and over 110 campgrounds. That's kind of cool. That's great. I kind of like that. Also, since starting RV Miles podcast, we've added two podcasts to our family, the America's National Parks podcast, which is still going strong, and it just published its 260th episode this week with Christmas in Yellowstone, and the Sea America podcast, which ran for 100 episodes. We've also built two YouTube channels, including the RV Miles channel, which is about to celebrate 100 episodes thousand subscribers but boy is that a slow climb yeah this last couple on? thousand has been oh. let's, you, we need your help like get in there if you haven't subscribed because yes. I, I don't subscribe to youtube channel i watch a lot of youtube but i don't actually hit subscribe ever Aww. and i should though I, should. I always just forget i just forget if you um, ask people to yeah. do it you should return yeah, that favor just, you gotta hit that i That's- just i just search <laughs> I just read, I, I keep it up in here. I subscribe because I just want to go over and find what I want to watch and then yeah. go over and look yeah. at it. No, so I, I should. I just. You should. No. Um, we've also launched the the second YouTube channel would be the RV Miles podcast channel, which officially launched on October 27th, 2021. And that was when we decided to split. We had been putting RV Miles podcast on that main RV Miles channel but we decided it was time to give it its own space, its own place to breathe. And we developed the RV Miles YouTube channel, which I think is one of the better business decisions well, we've ever we, made. Well, we figured out um, through through some other um, other YouTubers yes. that 
that a lot of people were adding podcasts to their YouTube channel. And like the second they did all of a sudden you're throwing these hour when, when you had a YouTube channel with a bunch of 10 minute videos, all of a sudden you're throwing these hour long conversations out there yeah. and the same people that want to watch those are not the, it's not the same audience. And that was really hurting the overall channel. Um, so putting it on its own separate channel, really it, it was really an algorithm based decision um, <laughs> that YouTube kind of forced us into, but I, I like it. Yeah. Just trying to please the YouTubes. Yeah. What you going to do? So I actually like it too. I'm glad that we did it. It feels like it's, we have a lot of crossover on yeah. the channels, but it is nice to be able to have those conversations uh, both in the Facebook groups and then there in YouTube with those that have just watched that whole episode. They kind of, a lot of people will comment live while they're watching it too, which is really great because you get an idea of like, Oh, they just watched this. They're making a comment. Okay, now they just watched this segment. They're going to comment on it. That can always be a lot of fun. Um, Speaking of video, so we did our audio stats. It's time to move into our video stats. And this is where I had a lot of like, whoa, moments uh, when I started going into our video stats. So our very first video episode, the very first time we ever sat down, put a camera in front of the two of us and recorded was episode 106 and it was published on August 13th, 2019 at Icelandic State Park where just a few days later our whole world was going to change. Wow. And it was really wild to sit there and see us in that North Dakota State Park and to know that like looking at that that you had I ha- a raging I, bacteria yeah. like in your brain at that moment. Yeah. And you were already starting to experience issues with it. Yeah. And that was like really hard to look at, like as I was going through today and doing so. Yeah, I didn't know that there was something really going no. on there. I, I just thought I actually thought I remember driving around the campground at night and just thinking our headlights were really dim and I needed to get the headlights checked yeah, out. Yeah, you talked to me about it. And I yeah. remember even saying to you, because you said something about coughing and it hurting. And I remember being like, oh, well, you know, it's maybe it's sinus. We've all been a little congested. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, whatever. And uh, not realizing like literally a week later, close to a week later, you would be undergoing uh, major surgery. Just it, wild to look at that. So the very first time you will ever see Jason and Abby sit down in front of you in front of a camera for the RV miles podcast is just days before Jason underwent brain surgery. So episode one Oh six, I know I didn't know it until today. You won't see us again. Like we don't come back. Uh, we publish a couple of episodes just as the audio mm-hmm. with a visual. You don't see us again until episode 115, which was, po- which was published on October 21st, 2020. 19. So we were in Minot. We were uh, in the Pioneer. You had undergone the first surgery. You were home. We were awaiting what we had hoped to be would be a successful second one. And you get to see us. We're sitting on the couch in the Pioneer. And that was wild to see again today, too. It's very strange to me to think that we have somewhat of a visual diary of our life. We have an audio and visual diary of that particular moment of our life. It's, it's very, very, very wild. Um, we didn't finally hunker down and commit to every episode being filmed of the podcast until episode 131, which occurred on February 11th, 2020. So this was not only after you had had your successful, um, brain surgery to put the titanium plate in your head, but we had just gotten back on the road for what was supposed to be a fantastic year for RV miles. And we had all these things lined up and all these plans and the universe had other plans, which were just fine as well and ended up actually. Yeah. Those next many episodes took place at the same park at Verde ranch. They did. Um, when, when the pandemic hit, we, we stayed there they until did. it got too hot and yes. then we started moving, moving North. But, uh, uh but our, yeah. our last episode on just the main channel of RV miles was episode 215. That's the last episode before we started mm-hmm. the, the podcast, 
YouTube yep. channel. And the next one would have been episode 216. So we have now put out 84 episodes. If you're watching 84 episodes right here on this channel, if you want to see any of the other stuff that I talked about before episode 215, or excuse me, 216, you would go back over to yeah. RV Miles. We have them there in a playlist. Um, some fun stats about the video. We've had over 1 million views on YouTube since we launched and over 200,000 watch hours. On just the podcast. On just the podcast. That's nice. just the stats for the podcast. The other channel, I don't look at those stats. Those are your stats. They're <laughs> they're in the tens of millions. I, I don't well, know. Well, it's, it's, you know, podcasting is a whole different thing. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's because you have somebody for a, an extended period of time that is getting getting involved. Um, and, and, I mean, you folks that listen to the podcast are are really our our community. I mean, of course we have people that just listen, uh, just watch the news videos and stuff in there. They're important to us as well. Um, but you guys are the people that we know, <laughs> the people that we have, have gotten to meet in person often. Uh, well, we've and, shared our lives. Yeah. You've shared, you have shared your lives with us uh, repeatedly. You have mm -hmm. uh, heard something that we have talked about and then you have come and you have privately messaged us or shared in the group or something. And you have shared your stories with us and we have been able to share our stories with you. And I think together for a lot of us, we have built 300 memories together. You know, we have spent 300 episodes together, laughing, crying, uh, being unsure, being afraid, celebrating joy, wringing our hands at this industry, but celebrating everything RV. And at the same time, just celebrating being human. And you've allowed us to be personal with you and be vulnerable with you and celebrate our small joys with you. And, and you, I hope, you know, always have an open door to do the same with us because we really value you and what's happening in your life. And, uh, I just, I hope that we're lucky enough to someday be sitting here and telling everyone, welcome to episode 600 yeah. of the RV miles podcast, because that would just be the greatest honor. Um, before we close this out, I have to give the top three video episodes mm -hmm. because he's back. Uh, episode 241 belongs to five years of the RV Miles podcast oh, and Dust Storm. <laughs> so that was that was back in 2022. And then here he is again, the current state of the RV industry with Josh the RV Nerd was our second most watched, following up with what has changed in our six well, years you, on you, you the road. You all really like these recap episodes, yeah. at least on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, they're looking, I think, um, for for insight into the, the world of RVing from yeah. maybe perhaps people who've been doing it for a while. There's a lot of people looking to, to get into it. So, uh, that is the past of RV miles. Jay, I'm going to throw this at you. What do you think is the future of RV miles? Well, podcast, we're very excited about the fact that we, uh, we are under contract for a studio space, um, here in our hometown now, um, and it's, it's just the perfect size for us. It's going to be a great space where we can, uh, really build out sets and record podcast episodes and the news videos and all of that, but where we can like e much more easily do live streams where we can more easily, uh, bring guests on remotely and stuff like that. So we're going to have a lot more of that stuff, uh, going forward and maybe even bringing some people into the studio when they come through town or some of the local dealers and all that sort of stuff. I have some really big plans for this studio that I'm going to need to rein in for budgetary reasons. Oh no. Um, but, I, but uh, you know, in the end, like this is, this is going to be a space where we can really create the most professional content that we can uh, and keep you all very up to date on what's happening in the RV industry, but also uh, keep sharing with you our adventures. I just looked at our calendar for next year. Oh my gosh. And I'm a little overwhelmed by how much we're are doing. Are we even living in this apartment in 2024? I don't travel. think we are. Um, you know, you have all these really exciting things for the studio and I want to share just my thoughts about the studio really quick because it kind of hit me. I was very against, and we've shared this a, a couple of times. I was really against like going to look at space right now. I thought that it was really um, just too soon. There was too much happening. And this particular space came up in downtown Rock Island in this, uh, what is a lovely old, uh, you know, brick 
buildings and very much like um, walkable small businesses and communities. And they have little festivals down there. And I like the area a lot. And so right on the Mississippi River, right on the Mississippi River next to the Centennial Bridge. It's beautiful. And I thought, okay, I'll go look. He really wanted to look at it. And I thought, okay, we'll just go. And um, we walked in and I knew that we weren't leaving without this place. As soon as we walked into the space, I knew that this was our space. And I felt in like that was so crazy to me because he was then being very much like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I was like, nope, this is it. This is what it is. <laughs> and I realized three things about it. Why this space. I love this space so much. Um, it is a there's four. There's a great opportunity for us to become a part of a community in that area, a community of small business owners and to open up our studio to the community, to create space where we can serve others. Um the second part is that it is part of a condo. There's like condos above. So there's the, the storefront buildings with condos above. It feels very much like what I used to walk past every single day with a stroller when we lived in Chicago. It feels like an old Chicago storefront. Uh, it's exposed brick inside. It feels very open. Um, it feels old. It feels historical. It just feels like something that wasn't just thrown up quickly, but that has like has a history to it. And finally, it has so much natural light that and being next to the river and being next to the waterfront and to open space and to all of the things that I truly miss about like RVing, which is that that immediate connection to nature, be that the sunlight you feel on your face or the ability to go take a walk next to the river and, you know, feel the breeze on, you know, as you're walking around and, and be in nature. I miss that a lot. I miss that my front door doesn't open up to a campsite anymore. So I think all of those things really speak to RV Miles. They speak to everything that we are because they are a little bit of who we are. Mm -hmm. All of those things are Jason and Abby. And so when we saw this space, I just knew that this was, this was RV miles home. Yeah. So I'm very scared, <laughs> of course, uh, but very excited. We've got a long, for the future. A long way to go. Uh, we, we haven't closed on it yet. So that's a, that's a hurdle. Yeah. Um, once we, <laughs> once that happens, we've, we've got to build it out. Um, and that's going to take some time with us traveling heavily in January. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, so it's going to be a while before we're um, really truly, we might be recording in there at some point, but it's, it, it, it needs work. It is an empty box space that, that has the worst possible echo ever. And that's going to be a problem for us. So we're going to have to take some time to do some sound remediation and stuff like that. It wouldn't be us if it wasn't a challenge. <laughs> so that's also probably why I loved it. Um, and speaking of travels, we hope next week you'll come back and join us because uh, next week we should be able to share with you several different ways um, over the next couple of months where we might all be able to get together and say hi to you. If you are in, areas of the Midwest or the Pacific Northwest. So, uh, or down in Tampa, as a reminder, we'll be down in Tampa for the RV super show that's happening. We'll be there, um, for the Wednesday and Thursday public days. So if you're going to be there, uh, please let us know. And if you see us, just stop us and say, hi, we don't really have anything formal. I don't think we're going to put anything super formal. I, we're going to try maybe to do something at the actual at ground, the show, yeah. but we don't think that we're going to do anything where we're going to ask you to come off site just yeah. to see us. We might just kind of be like, Hey, we're going to be by this. I this, might be buying a soda at 2 PM. <laughs> if anybody else wants to buy a soda at 2 PM, right. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at this water because the feature show, the show at has two o'clock. The show has some rules about, <laughs> about gatherings. It's been yeah. a, it's been a deal over the past couple of years. We weren't there last year, but Drama. the show has some there. They were sort of banning these yeah. sort of get togethers, which is weird because like, we're bringing people out to show, but okay, yeah, whatever. That's fine. So we might all go look at a water feature together, at like two o'clock on Wednesday or something. We'll see. So I'll find the pretzel cart. Yeah, exactly. So those are some things, but we'll share more with you all next week uh, when we come back here to do this again. All right, everybody, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will check the level of our tanks. Be right back. You know, when I was a kid, one of the best Christmases ever, I remember my dad bringing out a brand new bicycle into the living room when I was like seven years old. What's the adult version of that? What's the way that you can deliver that best gift ever affect this holiday season? 
Well, you can still do it with a bike. Electric e-bikes will impress even the hardest person to shop for on your list. There are lots of e-bikes to choose from out there, but there's only one Electric XP, the best-selling e-bike in America. It's the perfect gift for the explorer, the eco-warrior, or the parent on your list, or just as a treat for yourself. And starting at just $749, these e-bikes are friendly on your wallet. Plus, you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this holiday season at electricebikes.com. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. Welcome back. And it is time to check the level of our tanks. Jason, what is in your black tank this week? I saw in the local news today, um, it's not just a local thing. It's something happening around the country, but the, you know, we're in an area called the quad cities and uh, three of the five quad cities. Yes, there are five uh, have shut all their dog parks down because there's apparently some uh, mysterious respiratory disease yes. that's affecting dogs all across the country. So that got me thinking about all of you with your dogs in the dog parks at the campgrounds out there. Um, so if you haven't heard about this, be careful. Vets are recommending that you don't have your dogs play with unknown um, other dogs. But but this is a really big thing that's sort of sweeping the nation right now. And nobody really knows what it is or why. Yeah, it's really scary. I was just talking to Jamie about it last week because they're really concerned, obviously, yeah. with uh, their two sweet little doggies. Yeah, so yeah. so that, I'm sure there's a lot of campgrounds that are going to be shutting their dog parks, parks down temporarily yeah. or soon. It's absolutely wild. Um, Jay, what is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is we were able to go to a a sort of Christmas market slash farmer's market. Um, it's an area uh, here where they always have farmer's markets, but but this time it was a Christmas market. It's a it's an old freight house that's called the freight house that's right along the Mississippi River um, where they have, you know, a bunch of vendors come out and do the, sort of the farmer's market things. But we had a really great time, took Jack down there, had some hot up cider and listened to some really good Christmas caroling from uh, from some local singer songwriter type people. They sold Christmas trees uh, and it was just a, a wonderful little day out there. It was awesome. Ran yep. into a vendor who is a gluten-free dairy free baker, yeah. which was awesome. You didn't know it was here. Didn't know it was I, here. Well, the thing about these types of things, cause we've gone to lots of these things across the country mm -hmm. and this is like sort of where we've often, you know, struck up conversations with locals. Um, and it, inevitably we're, we're usually enamored with most of the small towns that we visit. And mm -hmm. I, it got me thinking when we were down there about like the, the biggest, the biggest problem with most small to medium sized towns with this sort of atmosphere, where people get together and stuff and, and ours included the biggest problem is the way the people that live there think about them. Why are you so grumpy about your town? Because we've there's so many times where we've talked to people and they're like, "Really, you like it that much here? How you like it here? And I, I and can't wait to get out of here." Obviously, there are you know people deal with things in their hometown. Yeah, um, we don't know what hometown the, politics are. I mean, right. We're not a part and, of your Facebook group, so your, we don't know your awful neighbors and your yeah. your your family issues and all that sort of stuff. We get it, um, and you know, in some ways, that can be the same way. For us, but I think there is a, just sort of this level of the grass is greener on the other side often for people and and most places in this country, to be honest, that we have been to, m the vast majority of them all have really wonderful things to experience that a lot of the locals never do. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think I put, if you want to see, there's, I made a reel of uh, our time down there over on our wandering family. And you can go over and watch that either on Facebook or Instagram. And one of the things I said in there was that if you want to know the heartbeat of a community, you want to know what keeps a community up is go and explore when they have these small business events get to know the small businesses in that community, those farmers markets, those shop local events that they do, especially throughout this time of year. But if you really want to know the heartbeat of a community, it's going to be there in its small businesses. And it was just really an enjoyable afternoon. It was so dreary out and it was just kind of nice to go and be festive and 
be with all of these local vendors and get to know local vendors that we didn't know were here. And again, if you ever move into a community, the best way to get to know what is what's out there, what's unique about this place is to check out these small business events and these farmer market events. All right, what's in your black tank this week? I don't have one. You don't, I don't have, have one. a black tank. Well, that's I'm, good. I am not black. There's no black tank on episode 300 for Abby. I just, I don't have one. It's just positive this week. Okay. I am so positive, Jason. I am the most positive human being you will ever meet that I do not even have a black tank. This what's week. in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank, actually, I have two fresh tanks. I'll go ahead and give one is on Saturday night. We went out to this restaurant and we had uh, heard a piano player, a local piano player who was just sitting there playing the piano, playing the tunes, doing it all. He had a little my way. He had a little Andrew Lloyd Webber. He was breaking out some Elton John. He has some journey. He was just kind of doing it all. And like in this real chill, like uh, lounge singer kind of just real vibe, martini bar kind of vibe where we were at. I think that's super cool. I think that those kinds of musicians just don't get enough love. I think that that's something that's really hard to do, to sit down at a piano, in a restaurant, in a bar, and create an atmosphere of music where you aren't invading everybody's space, but you're enhancing it. And you're like singing across all genres while I'm sitting there having like my, you know, my martini and I'm, you know, I... This guy's gonna. I want this guy to be my voice teacher. He's it's like an amazing really, bio. He's it's a weird balance. Phenomenal. You you gotta like you you gotta make create a positive atmosphere in the room, yeah. but but not draw everybody's attention at the same right. time and not demand it. Uh, he was very good at yeah, this guy. Had, he is resume. His bio uh, is insane. He did stop the world. I want to get off on Broadway with Sammy Davis Jr. How this man landed in the Quad Cities, I'll never know. Well, played, I do know because I asked him. He but. played the Ritz Carlton. He was a Ritz Carlton piano player in Chicago for like yeah. six or eight years. I, he, he's, said. he gives private instruction now, and he's had students that have you know gone off onto Broadway and onto American Idol or America's Got Talent and all of these different things. And of course, I got his card because I want to start taking voice lessons again. So, it, but I just, uh, overall, I just think that, you know, these musicians that do these spaces like this, where it's not necessarily a cover band that's, you get up there and the cover band is really going to pull all the focus. Their job here when you're a solo artist, especially a piano lounge sort of situation is to enhance the atmosphere, to bring people to you, but to not overwhelm the people that are there mm-hmm. in the space. And I think that's very hard to do. And uh, he did a fantastic job at that. Uh, my second is I want to give some love again to local libraries. We give a lot of love to local libraries, like on the road. And we've talked a lot about how great they are on the road. They are just as great. If you are not on the road and you are stationary in your hometown, we have been using our local libraries right now as an office for Jason to go and write. We've had local libraries recently that have charging stations that when we drop Jack off at his driver's ed class, there's a library really close by that has an EV charging port. We go over there, we get some work done. We get to know the people there. Our local library has all of these events going on tailored to families and kids and adults happening this month and into the new year that is really spanning all different kinds of interests and genres. And it's, I think, just a good reminder of what a fantastic resource that is in your community. Again, yeah. the heartbeat of your community. So the one, the one nearby here that, that I've been going to, to write, cause, because we don't have an office space, is a decision we made that we yeah. were going to go out and get a studio. So we don't have a space here yet to work other Mm-mm. than like the kitchen table or sitting on our bed. So it's kind of like being in the RV still. Yeah. Um, but I have, I've been going to the, the local small branch. Uh, so it's not the main library here. And they have, when you walk in the door, they've got this rack. Like, it's kind of like uh, one of the round uh, clothing racks at a retail store, right? Mm-hmm. The, you know, like with hangers and all that. It is full of different shaped cake pans to it's check amazing. out. It is just, um, I can't wait to get up there. I'm going <laughs> to check out some cake pans. I think it's really cool. I, You know, again, get to know your local libraries and the resources that they provide for your community is really quite phenomenal. So uh, those are my two fresh tanks this week. All right. That's it for this week's episode, the 300th episode of the RV miles podcast. We're not allowed to have alcohol, no alcohol on, on, YouTube, on YouTube, but if you know, for the audio, we are holding a couple of little champagne flutes and we just, we are cheersing you with imaginary 
champagne. Wait a minute. No, I just watched a video where like people were like performing dad jokes and they had to take a shot if they laughed. Oh, well, this maybe. Is, uh, people have alcohol on YouTube, but I think you're I, not allowed to have a sponsor. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know. But we're not, we're doing, not it. doing it. So, but we are going to cheers you with our fake drinks. Ding. And just say thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking around. We hope you'll continue to stick around and that you, along with us, will keep logging those RV miles for 300 more episodes. Bye, everybody. Bye.